when anyone is guilty of a serious crime and they do not want to be held accountable. Their only course of action is to conceal the truth. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. <laughs> I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Put these on. Look, you crazy mother. Put these on. Hey, stay away from me. Hunters, yes. Bread to be predators, but bread also to be controlled. Bread to be predators. But bread also. All their thoughts. So it's not enough that you, that you hunt them down like animals. That's their role here. To be your food. Eat them! Yes. And for those who are suitable to be breeding vessels. And for those who are suitable to be breeding vessels. At least they don't know about subliminal advertising. <laughs> That's not even a thing, right? Eat them! That's their role here. To be your food. Yes. Eat them! We bred ourselves into castes. Some to be our eyes and ears. Some to be our muscles and sinew. Bread to be predators. But bread also to be controlled. Put these on. You control their thoughts. You hunt them down like animals. That's their role here. To be your food. Yes. And for those who are suitable to me. Breeding vessels. What did you see, Clarice? What did you see? Lambs. They were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lambs. They were screaming. Be your food. Yes. 
Look! Look at them! They're everywhere! Now hold on. You ain't the first son of a bitch to wake up out of their dream. The human body generates more bioelectricity than a 120 volt battery and over 25,000 BTUs of body heat. Combined with a form of fusion, the machines had found all the energy they would ever need. Put these on. fields where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. For the longest time, I wouldn't believe it. And then I saw the fields with my own eyes. Watched them liquefy the dead so they could be fed intravenously to the living. And standing there, facing the pure, horrifying precision, I came to realize the obviousness of the truth. And what we've been doing with the egg and the rebirth, uh, yeah. it's meant to signify a, an artistic statement of birthing a new race, uh, a race within the race of humanity, a race within the race of humanity. A race within the race of humanity. Can you tell me what's happening? Well, my sources are no longer fully annotated and my information is somewhat anecdotal. But I believe what was once one race is now two. One above and one below. Two distinct species that have evolved. And how do those below survive? That is the real question, isn't it? Uh, well, if you don't like the answers, you should avoid asking the questions. We're birthing a new race. What is the Matrix? Control. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. No. I don't believe it. It's not possible. I didn't say it would be easy, Neo. I just said it would be the truth. Stop! Let me out! Let me out! They have taken the hearts and minds of our leaders. They have recruited the rich and the powerful. And they have blinded us to the truth. Our human spirit is corrupted. Why do we worship greed? Because outside the limit of our sight, Feeding off us, perched on top of us from birth to death, are our owners. Our owners. They have us. They control us. They are our masters. Wake up. They're all about you. All around you. We're birthing a new race. A race within the race of humanity. There are certain questions that have been asked since the dawn of civilization. People have asked, who are we? Where do we come from? Why are we here? What's the meaning of life? What's it all about? I asked those same questions myself in 2002 as I stood in my living room. <clears throat> I didn't understand life. I, nothing made sense anymore. I just didn't, I didn't understand any of it. I went out, I made a lot of money. I thought I had accomplished what you're supposed to do in life. And I found out it was nothing. And I stood in my living room and I, I had a very honest prayer with the Lord God. And I told him, I don't understand any of this. Life doesn't really make any sense. 
And then I, I admitted I had done some things in my life that uh, I thought I would never do. I did all these things to make a lot of money, to buy houses, to buy cars, um, to have the girlfriends I wanted, whatever. But in the end, none of it made any sense. So I, I made an honest appeal to God just to tell me the truth, what's life all about. Since the dawn of civilization, these questions have been asked, who are we? Where did we come from? Why are we here? What's life all about? I'm going to take all those questions and I'm going to put them into a statement from the Bible. Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. In that one statement, every single question I, I posed to you earlier, every single question will be answered, every single one. This comes with biblical absolute proof. It comes with so much information and so much spiritual gifting that the past 24 hours, I haven't been really sure how to deliver it. I've been prayerful asking the Lord, how do I how do I give this to everybody? So he told me to do it in parts. And he also told me I had to make sure people had some basic understandings. You need to know what the word reprove means. The word reprove means to correct or to disprove, to refute, to convince, or to convict. You also need to know what the word manifest means. Clear or obvious to the eye or the mind. Synonyms are obvious, clear, plain, apparent, evident, just obvious, you can see it. To make something manifest, you make it visible, clear to the eye and to the mind. Now let's start with the Bible. John chapter eight, then Jesus again said unto them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. Jesus is the light of the world. He actually used the name of God, I am the light of the world. This is tantamount that you understand that, that Jesus is the light of the world. We're going to be reproving that which is hidden in the darkness, and we're going to be making manifest all the evil hidden world in order to bring forth the truth. The Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. There's that word. For it is a shame, it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. So all things that are reproved are made obvious to the mind or to the eye by the light. Jesus is the light of the world. For whatsoever doth make manifest, whatever makes clear to the mind or to the eye is light. Wherefore he saith, Arise or awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. This video is going to be such a paradox. It's going to fly in the face of what most people have believed their entire lives. You've been lied to. What you thought was life from the moment you were born was actually death. You were born into death. You're not even alive until you're born again in Christ. Once you're born again, then you are alive. You're alive in Christ. Here's the scripture. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. Luke 8, verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. There it is again. There is nothing that is secret that shall not be made manifest clear or obvious to the mind or to the eye. Neither anything that is hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So everything that's secret is going to be made manifest. Whatever makes manifest is light. Jesus is the light of the world. I want you to understand everything I've just told you. Whatever makes manifest is light and Jesus is the light that makes things manifest. Let me give you a very simple example. This is an image of the Virgin. I'm going to reprove this and I'm going to make manifest what it really is. Once it is reproved, it is an image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. The introduction that we did is true. Even though you may have been listening to a narrative at the beginning from a movie called The Time Machine, it's true. The images that we put in there of serpents uh, eating animals and those animals screaming, those are real Im Those are real videos. At the end of that, we edited in a serpent eating a human, which is also true. Even though this video is CGI, this is everyone's fate right there. That's what I'm trying to save you from. There's a Bible scripture, be as wise as serpent, but as gentle as doves. 
Let's go to that scripture. Matthew 10. The ministry that I've been given by the Lord, for those of y'all that have seen what I've been doing is, I show you stuff that you would never have seen or believed was even there. Whatever makes manifest is light. I'm a servant of the Lord God. I was called as an end of the world harbinger. The world is coming to an end. It's about to be burned by fire. The entire human race was a hybridization in order to make a host body into an energy transfer system in which Lucifer, the serpent, was able to take God's children, angels, and convert their energy into energy for his kingdom and his demons. That's what the whole human race and host body system is about. Let me show you what it means to be as wise as a serpent. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, therefore be ye therefore wise. It means thoughtful, that is sagacious, discreet, implying a cautious character. It denotes practical skill or acumen, and the word G4908 sunetos, mentally put or putting together. Think about that, mentally, mentally putting together. It indicates intelligence or mental acquirement. So, be as wise as serpents. The word serpent means through the idea of sharpness of vision. It's telling you to be sagacious and to put things together in an intelligent way as serpents through the idea of keenness or sharpness like this through keenness of vision and mental acumen, studying and looking at it. It also says as a type of sly cunning, an artful, malicious person, especially Satan. So if you're going to be as wise as a serpent, you're going to be using your vision and your intellect and your acumen to detect something that's a sly cunning, artful, malicious person or Satan. So I'm going to be showing you Satan. And it says to be as harmless as doves. It means unmixed. This is about two races of beings, one mixed with the other. Like Daniel 2.43, the last kingdom of the world, they shall mingle themselves together with the seed of men. But to be as gentle as a dove, you want to be unmixed. It also comes from G1, like Alpha, like the Alpha and the Omega. By the way, the Alpha was not mixed with anything unmixed that is figuratively innocent how do you become unmixed the two become one so what i've been telling you the, the scriptures always bear things out always the plan here is to deliver information that answers every question of life who am i where did i come from why am i here and what's life all about the way to answer every one of those questions is and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is brutal. It's very well described in the Bible. The unrolled scroll. It's sweet when you eat it. But it becomes very bitter once you once you swallow it. And it's exactly what the Lord gave me. The unrolled scroll. I highly suggest you take a jump drive. You put this information on a jump drive. And put it somewhere safe. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room, you can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? that you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. 
Bread also to be controlled. But bread also to be controlled. He winks his eye and points his finger. That's how I know when I'm in the presence of the enemy. Because if someone says, hey Johnny, how's it going buddy? And they do that, they're closing one eye and because of the twin paradigm, only an eye that's open is the all-seeing eye. And that's what's looking at you going like this. And he's mocking me through that person. And that's why they go, hey, I drew a picture of you. It's like, why'd you draw a dead sheep on my face? Every time I've asked one of the people that has done this, that, that question, why'd you put a dead sheep on the image of my face? They freak out. They're like, and they start growling. I mean, I've had someone growl and run away. She went running away. I had another guy start frothing at the mouth, screaming. I was like, whoa. And I mean, we almost got in a fist fight right there. I was like, what are you doing? Well, you're the one that drew the picture, man, not me. And then the kid, Alex, at Starbucks, he's like, hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you. I looked at Chris, the manager, and I go, hey, Chris, remember I told you a week and a half ago Alex was going to offer to draw a picture of me? Well, he drew a picture of me. And on it, there's a dead sheep behind my ear. Well, when I showed the picture to Chris, Chris was like, Whoa! I was like, I told you. How would any human being know that some other human being is going to walk up and draw a picture of me with a dead sheep on my face? That's insane. Unless, unless you see into that world, which the Lord's allowed me to do. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to see into the world right now. In many ways, and in many circumstances, life itself paints a picture of perception versus reality. As you're about to see, what most people perceive as reality is in truth a complete misperception. This is a video from 2012. Obviously in this video, I was pretty on fire because these things were starting to be revealed to me and they were so amazing and so supernatural. I, I was in absolute stupefaction of the, the information and the material that was coming my way. Uh, and the Lord just kept giving me more and more and letting me perceive more and more. I'm going to show you that world now because I've been in it five more years since this particular video was done. This is an image of the Vatican. This is St. Peter's Basilica. We're going to drop in through the ceiling right here and we're going to look at the large altar that's right here at the tip of this upside down cross. This is the same building you saw earlier in the video that made an image of a serpent wearing a crown. And as we approach the altar, what you're looking at is the face of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. Here's the eye of the sheep. Here's the other eye of the sheep. The nostril, the nostril, the teeth and the tongue sticking out. The ears are coming down. They're slightly hidden by the pillars. We'll drop in at number one. This is one of the biggest reveals in modern times. This is what the Lord revealed to me. Here's the sheep's eye right here made by this spot in the pillar. Here's the other eye right here made by the dark area on the pillar. Here's the nostril made by the arm of the chair. Here's the other nostril. Here are the teeth are. Here's the tongue sticking out underneath. I want you to get a very good look at what it's constructed of. These are a bunch of angels. These angels are being pulled in and they're going into this vortex. So the wool of the sheep all the, the wool over his head and around this window. These are God's children that are being pulled into this vortex. That is a sheep with its tongue sticking out. Here's an image of a sheep. I've drawn it in for you. Here's the eye of the sheep and the eye of the sheep. Nostril, nostril, mouth. Here's the ear of the sheep going out. Here's the hair of the sheep. Here's the other ear of the sheep going out and the hair of the sheep. There's an image on the face of the sheep right here. This is an image of the devil with wings. Here's the eye of the devil, the eye of the devil, the nose, the mouth. He's got horns and he's got wings. The wings of the devil are the ears of the sheep. I'm going to take this devil and I'm going to slide him over and I'm going to put him right on the face of the sheep. Here's another image of a sheep. Here's a sheep's eye. There's a teardrop coming out of the eye, top of the head. The ear of the sheep, here's the nose, here's the mouth of the sheep, the bottom lip of the sheep, and the neck of the sheep. I'm going to take this sheep and I'm going to slide it over and I'm going to put it in the mouth of a serpent. And I'm going to drop the sheep in right there. 
And here is a serpent underneath the sheep with its mouth wide open, and the serpent is eating the sheep. I've simply drawn around it, and I've given you enough lines to make it easy for you to see or perceive the serpent is eating the sheep. Now I'm going to take the same image, and I'm going to put it on the place that it originated from. There it is. And see, there is the eye of the sheep. Here is the nose of the sheep. This girl's hair, like a sideburn, becomes the mouth of the sheep. And then her ear becomes the bottom lip. And you can see that the serpent becomes very visible underneath. And there is a serpent eating the sheep. This is a greening card that was given to me by someone very close to me. I'm going to rotate this now 90 degrees counterclockwise. And this is the image that you get. It's a greening card. So here's the serpent right here, and the serpent's mouth is agape, and the serpent is eating the sheep. And you can clearly see it's a serpent eating the sheep. There you go. All right. Here's one of the images that was drawn to me by a guy named Marcel right here. There was a knot in the wood right here. He used the knot in the wood to make the eye of the sheep, so it would look like water coming out of the eye of the dead sheep. Here's the top of the head of the sheep the nose of the sheep, the tongue sticking out, the bottom uh, jaw, and the neck of the sheep. And then the sheep joins to a goat, and one's right side up, one's upside down. Here's the goat's horn, horn, ear, eye closed, nose, other eye, and the front hoof comes around my ear, and the hoof of the sheep makes my sideburn. Again, Marcel came up and handed me this picture of myself. I thought it was very odd. He gave it to me in 2001. In 2001, I was not born again. I could not see or perceive that he had done this drawing with hidden imagery on it. Once I got saved, I was able to see it. He had also drawn an image of a serpent around my neck with its tail wrapped around my neck. That was a real shocker. Uh, I was once When I woke up, I was very disturbed about that. So here is another image that uh, I just simply colored it in. There's the sheep on top of my head, the goat, and there's the serpent wrapped around me and consuming me. We're starting to have the common denominator repeat itself. Devil superimposed on top of a sheep, serpent eating a sheep, serpent eating a sheep. And here we go again. This is another image that was drawn to me by a guy named Alex in Starbucks. I instantly saw that he had drawn a dead sheep behind my ear. And after studying it a little bit, I was able to perceive there was also a serpent eating the sheep, as well as the, the ear of the sheep turning into the serpent's tail, going into its own mouth. So here you go. You can see the sheep right behind my ear. He used like the bow of my do-rag to make the other ear of the sheep. So why are people drawing pictures of me with dead sheep on me and serpents eating me? And here is uh, the same image. Uh, I've just colored it in to make it a little easier. Uh, I colored the sheep yellow and the serpent green. This particular ear of the sheep, he put it in that, that proximity because if I were to color that the same color green as the serpent, the tail would be going in the mouth of the serpent. That would be the serpent eating its own tail, which we'll deal with later in this video as well. These are images of twins, uh, one white, one black. The shadowing is different, it's color different, but I want to show you something. What you're really looking at are sheep. This is the head of a sheep. Here's the eye of the sheep right here. The eye of the child right here is where the eye of the sheep is. But this is the nose of the sheep right here, top of the head of the sheep, and the ear of the sheep. This is a black sheep that's upside down. If I were to draw in a white line right here in front of this kid's head, you would be able to perceive that this is a black sheep the other direction. Again, we have a common denominator. Here is an image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out, and it becomes several things. If you take your hand and you hold it over the nose right here, you'll see very clearly that this is a sheep with its tongue sticking out. There's the ear of the sheep. There's the other ear of the sheep. One eye is open. One eye is closed. The mouth is open sideways, and the tongue is coming out. Again, another dead sheep. We're going to rotate it a little bit towards us. It turns into an image of the devil or a gargoyle. 
uh, with two sharp feet, teeth like a vampire. And there's Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones on top of that image. Here's another image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. There's the eye of the sheep. There's going down to the nose of the sheep. There's the nostril. The mouth is open. The tongue is sticking out. There's the bottom jaw. Uh, here is the ear of the sheep right here. I'm going to take the sheep and I'm going to put it over here where it goes. The other parts right here, we'll get to those later. The critical thing is there's another sheep with its tongue sticking out. So we have this common denominator again. We have images of sheep with their tongue sticking out. They've all come from different locations. They all have the same agenda. Here's another image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. There's the eye of the sheep. There's the eye of the sheep, the nostril. And then here's the lips of the sheep right here. Going, you see the lines going out? And there is the tongue of the sheep at the top of the head coming down to the ears. When you turn this image upside down, it becomes an image of the Virgin. Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. Okay, again, here is another image of the altar of St. Peter in the Vatican. We, we have superimposed an image of a sheep over that, so you can see how obvious this all is. Question, what is with all these dead sheep? You know, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. In John 21, Jesus uh, asked Peter, he said, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, yes, I love you. He said, then feed my sheep. A second time, Jesus asked Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. And then he said, feed my sheep. A third time, Jesus asked, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And Peter was grieved and he said, Lord, you know all things. And then he said, then feed my sheep. In the very next verse, Jesus told Peter that his death would glorify God. Peter died upside down on the cross. Here's another image of a sheep. Here's a teardrop coming out of the eye of the sheep. Here's the top of the head. Here's the ear of the sheep. Coming down this way, we go to the nose of the sheep. It's black. The mouth is open and the tongue is sticking out again, going under the chin of the sheep to the neck. When you take this image and you turn it right side up, it becomes an image of Nefertiti, the hieroglyph that you'll see later. Remember, this is called the altar of St. Peter, St. Peter's throne. Here's a shirt called Affliction. It's a very popular clothing line. These are supposed to be pistols pointing out, but the, the trigger makes the eye of the sheep, makes the eye of the sheep coming down this way, nostril, nostril, and the tongue sticking out. This is made up by many other images in order to hide the sheep. Nevertheless, again, an image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. In the previous video where I told you there was a guy named Carlos that started growling like that, he started growling because I called him out. He had drawn this image and I asked him, did you draw this image? And he said, yes, I did. And I said, who is it? He said, it's a girl I committed adultery with. I thought that was very strange. As I took the picture off the wall, I started drawing in the lines of the picture. The Bible says three unclean spirits leapt from the mouth of the beast and the false prophet and the dragon. Let me show you those three unclean spirits. Here's the eye and here's the eye and here's the mouth of one eye eye mouth now the other one shares a common eye here's the eye here's the eye and here's the mouth and here's the third one in blue eye eye nose mouth it looks like the the alien from the et movie carlos also drew himself dead here's his eye here's the top of his head here's the top of the head there's the eye there's the nose there's the other eye there's his mouth open, the op his open mouth, and there's the bottom of his chin. When I showed him that he had put himself in this image, he started whimpering like a child that was terrified, and I mean absolutely terrified. I'm going to take this image and I'm going to drag it over and drop it on the head of the serpent. So now you have these three unclean spirits like frogs that make up the head of the serpent. There's the eye of the serpent. There's the nostrils of the serpent, the pits. There's the mouth, and there's the little hole in the mouth, and the tongue coming out. That's an amazing image. Here's another image of a sheep. Here's the eye of the sheep, and here's the ear of the sheep, top of the head of the sheep, the nose of the sheep. There's no tongue sticking out on the sheep. If you rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, the sheep goes right here on the girl's face. This dark blue spot is the eye of the sheep. It's easier for your perception for me to put it in negative imagery 
the Bible says, woe unto them who call white black and black white. It That has a variety of levels of meaning, but I've come to understand that when I am able to see this hidden imagery, sometimes if I simply make white black and black white, the image is extremely clear to see what's hidden in it. There's a serpent coming down the side of this girl's head and the tail is wrapped around her neck and her eyes are closed. This is very common. On the images that were done of me, my eyes are closed. And on this image of me, he drew lines and then he drew an extra set of lines to where if you took your thumb and you covered up this image of my eye and this one, these would make an image of my eyes being closed. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Common denominator devil on top of a sheep serpent eating a sheep sheep and goat with a serpent eating the sheep dead sheep serpent eating the sheep again sheep one right side up one upside down one white one black again sheep with its tongue sticking out becomes a devil as well again a dead sheep with its tongue sticking out and we will revisit this later in this video this image right here of the virgin, when you turn the virgin upside down, becomes a sheep with its tongue sticking out. The altar of St. Peter who was crucified upside down is an image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. An image of Nefertiti in a hieroglyph, when you turn it upside down, is a sheep with its tongue sticking out. An affliction shirt is a sheep with its tongue sticking out. An image that Carlos drew of a girl that he had an affair with becomes a sheep and a serpent with its tail wrapped around her neck. If you continue to watch this video, I guarantee you, you will know the mystery of all mysteries. You'll know the mystery of life, the mystery of where we come from, the mystery of who we are and why we're here. In the very next section before we get started, I'm going to give you the scriptures from Jesus himself to give you your identity as we prove it out. Identity is hidden in Christ. The Bible says, Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Because you're in a host body, and it's literally the walking dead. Called to be holy. This is 1 Peter 1. Therefore, preparing your minds for action, and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that shall be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And if you call on him as the father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. We're sojourners. We're exiles. 
John 10, Jesus told the, the Jews, and they were going to stone him. He said, for what good works are you going to stone me? And the Jews said, we stone you not for good works, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself equal to God. I showed you, they got it backwards. He was God that made himself equal to a man. Jesus said, do not your own scriptures say you are gods. And if the word of God came unto them that are called gods and the scriptures cannot be broken. Those are Jesus's words. Jesus is God in the flesh. No one can argue with what he said. He was quoting Psalm 82. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said you are gods. The word is Elohim. It means of the supreme God, magistrates, angels. And all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So every one of you is a God. Every one of you is going to die like a man and you shall fall you fell from heaven. Everybody was an angel. I just proved it using the word of God. You shall be holy for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. You shall fall like one of the princes. You were exiled. End of story. Remember the Statue of Liberty? The number 11 is represented in the 11 pointed star that the Statue of Liberty sits on, which is called a hindecagram. Uh, by the way, the Lord told me, Jonathan, go look at the Statue of Liberty. Look at the base. He led me there after he let me see Beyonce's dress with the Ouroboros and the serpent eating its own tail. And it was in an isotoxal star, which means one face becoming the other, one dimension becoming the other. Because what's happening on the earth is you have one consciousness taking over another inside a host body. A race within the race of humanity. The number 11 is represented in the 11 pointed star that the Statue of Liberty sits on, a hindecagram. It represents the, this is called the kelepot. It literally means peels or husks. So peels, shells, or husks, which is our body. And look at this, are the representation of evil or impure spiritual forces the polar opposites of the Sephirot. Libertas is the name of this goddess, and she holds the light above her head, and this mother goddess, it represents duality, Cain and Abel, polar opposites. Thamil, twin gods, is the name of one of the Kilipoth in the Kabbalah, the tree of life. Thamil represents dual contending forces struggling and it is represented by two giant heads with bat-like wings, like that image I showed you guys of the double-headed phoenix with the serpent over the head. There is the double-headed phoenix with the two heads, the two intersecting uh, DNAs with the head of the serpent ruling over it, see, as a crown. So you have one V and another V intersecting, making a W with the head of the serpent ruling over the system polar opposites one facing one way one facing the other way this is the nature of the entire earth so i told you the statue of liberty is it's a representation of pure and utter slavery for the people of this country because they have this what they think is freedom is really slavery listen to freedom you know uh just look at the united states i won't go into it. it's too much to give me a headache so here is that mother goddess figure ruling over the host body, which is, you know, all of us and where we have this dual force going on within us and we are being cannibalized. And there are the twin towers that represent the twins and they're being destroyed because they're putting up the one world freedom tower because that means that the duality has gone and a new consciousness has taken over. Do you all remember the lyrics to the song Eleutheria, which, by the way, which is the name of the Statue of Liberty. A new day is dawning because it's time for a change. Think of Barack Obama uh, change with new consciousness forming. There you go. There comes a new day. Eleutheria is the name of this goddess that rules over the twin paradigm. The twins are gone and a new consciousness is formed which is purely evil live out your time conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile 
of your sojourning your temporary living condition i've been telling everybody for a long time lucifer is posing as god of this world through the mother goddess system that's why that giant dead sheep there turns into the female reproductive system and that's why all these angels that make up the wool of the sheep are being sucked into this vortex because that is the female reproductive system and they're being birthed out into the flesh as their prison suit they got serpent skin and they were birthed out into the their prison suits on the earth which houses the soul the essence of these angels which is you and I and everybody, you're all exiles, you're all in a human host body, and you've all, you're have all you all in a cannibalistic system, which is the calipot, which destroys you unless you are converted. This is the, the poem, the Statue of Liberty poem. Everybody knows the bottom lines. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. But let me show you the rest of it. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame. Hmm, giants think of Nephilim. With conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. Wow. Luke 10, 18. Jesus said, I beheld Satan falling as lightning from heaven. Barack Obama. If you look it up in the Greek and the Aramaic the imprisoned lightning Lucifer and her name mother of exiles and she's cannibalizing your soul because of your duality a lot of people have wanted to know for a long time what was this thing in the garden what was that fruit it never mentions a particular piece of fruit it says and you know if you eat it or even touch it you'll die Jesus said in the Bible you know unless unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, we don't really sit down and eat his flesh and drink his blood, do we? No, we don't. We take his words into us, and that is food for our soul, for our essence. Just like the Bible says, you've been on milk, now it's time to move on to the meat, and that's of the word of God, because when you take in the word of God, you are literally eating, consuming the word. And that's what edifies you. And that's what builds you up and strengthens you. I want to just give you this thought. If you were to take in words from another source that were lies and incorrect, like Lucifer telling a bunch of angels, no, you can do this. You can have your host body and you can have sex and you can have families and you won't die, which is a lie. You will die. You can either be a spiritual being or a flesh being. I wanted to make sure that you know you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men. You shall fall like one of the princes. It means to cast down, cast out. Live out the time of your exile in fear of God because you've been exiled. The Statue of Liberty represents the mother of exiles. And the Catholic Church is called the Mother Church in the Catholic Church that worships the Virgin, just like Eleutheria, the Goddess Virgin. The reason they worship the Virgin is because that is their source of food. This window right here that is receiving all of God's children you shall fall like one of the princes so they can die like men because they're falling here out of heaven into this dimension so they can be birthed into the flesh. Now they're in deteriorating host bodies, whereas before they had eternal bodies, they had spiritual bodies, but now they're being birthed into the flesh so they can die like men. And that window right there is the mouth of the serpent on the outside of the building. That window right there goes right there. So the serpent is eating all God's children. You see right there, what a, isn't that fascinating? My random image popped up and it's the very window that's right in there. That's amazing. So there it is. That's a perfect representation. So the mouth of the serpent is a vagina because that's where all flesh comes from. That's where all the kelepots are formed. That's where all the, the, you know, the husks are made to house the new soul that is injected into that host body which is in a, a struggle with its polar opposite. Okay, just remember this, because we're going on to the next part. There's a picture of Jonathan Cleck that's identical to an altar in the Catholic Church. That's that serpent race hunting Jonathan, because they're bred into casts, and they have eyes and ears everywhere, and Satan controls them. See, there you go. Okay, there you go.